Hey guys, this is Jaber from UGX Mods, and we're going to be continuing a tutorial series on Black Ops 3 mod tools. So today, we're going to be going into Radiant and actually working on our map. So the first thing that we're actually going to be covering in this tutorial is we're just going to be looking at the UI and Windows in Black Ops 3 Radiant. So that's Radiant Black's new setup that they have and how it can be customized. Uh, the second thing we're actually going to be going over is setting up our lights and compiling them so that when we uh, want to see what the map would look like in game we can actually just uh, set the lighting up so that it just shows us an in-game view and we can look at what the map might look like in game and then the third thing that we're going to be going over is how to add some basic entities into the map such as brushes models and prefabs so these will be useful for making your map and actually making it detailed so it actually looks like a physical map. We'll go over some more advanced stuff like patches and whatnot later. Um, the last thing I'm going to want to cover is just a couple of tips, actually just one particular tip for making Radiant a bit easier to use for those of you who are used to World at War's Radiant. Alright guys, let's get started. Alright guys, so this is what you're going to be able to see as soon as you load up uh, Radiant with your test map or your map in general is what you're going to be given is this default map. Uh, so we got some basic brushes and whatnot here uh, so we'll go over that in a few seconds but just to start off uh, we got a couple of windows here that are default so we got the XY top uh, which is just your top view so this is like a 2D grid and this is like a top down view of what you see in the camera view so it's pretty self-explanatory of how this works but uh, basically, I have brushes and whatnot here, and I can see there's this brush, there's the box there, the window with its little room here is this here, so it should be pretty easy to interpret. So we'll start off with the top down window here. So I can scroll in and out to zoom, I can right click and drag to move the camera, and then I will also have multiple views. So I have the top view, I can control tab, and now I'm on a side view. XZ front, control tab again, YZ side, so it's another side view, and then I'm back to the top view if I do it one more time. So that's pretty useful if I'm like, oh, I, I need to see how tall this is, or I want it a certain height, I could go to the side, it's like, oh, it's 256 units. I could change that and kind of scale it by left clicking and whatnot. So that's a pretty useful uh, tool. Well, it's something that we've had in uh, World of War rating, but it's pretty useful to have in this as well. So moving on, we have the camera view here, and actually it's probably when you first load up, it's going to look like this. You won't have as many things at the top there. Um, so what we're going to see is a very similar uh, movement system, in fact exact same movement system to World of War Radiant. Right click to uh, just kind of move around, I'm just holding right click and moving my mouse. If I hold control, I can move only uh, vertically and horizontally, I can't move in and out of the screen. If I hold control and shift and right click, I can rotate the camera. So this is basically how you would go around and move and look around and select things and whatnot. So speaking about selecting things, if I wanted to say select this wall in the top view or in the camera view, I can hold shift and left click. So that will select, you can see the wall selected there and it's selected here as well. If I were to do that in the top view, what's going to end up happening is I'm actually going to end up selecting this sky box, the top here. So if I tried to select that wall, I'll notice the top got selected. So it's always what's ever closest to the view. So if I actually hit H right now to hide that and try that again, it'll select the wall because there was nothing in between. So I can then hit uh, Shift H to bring back all things that were hidden. So if I want to deselect something, I hit escape. Um, another tip for selecting things is if I hold control and shift and then left click, it won't select the whole brush, it'll only select one face. So that's pretty useful if I wanted to say apply texture by double clicking on the texture here uh, to that one face. And then if I wanted to select, a like say I had a texture in the map and I wanted to apply it to something, say I had this whole brush selected and I wanted it to be this default grid here. I can middle mouse that and it will select that texture for there. So that's a pretty basic uh, 
uh, pretty basic. It's also the exact same way it was done in World at War. A lot of the uh, actual key bindings are exactly the same. So moving on, we have the textures window here, which is uh, exactly the same as World at War, except now we have the uh, kind of the search functionality built into the, the window here instead of having it at the top. So we can go through all textures. So this is all textures loaded into Radiant, or we can do the ones that are all in use, which are the ones that are loaded specifically in this map. So you can see there's not many textures here because that's all the ones that this map has loaded. If I go to all, there are a lot of textures. You'll see they take a bit to load sometimes. You can get down to uh, more textures. If you heard that little ding, don't be alarmed. That's just uh, autosave. So it's you'll hear that a lot and you can actually go into the settings and change how often the autosave happens. So uh, we also have filters here. So you could type in, say I wanted a wood texture, I could type in wood and I'll come up with anything that has wood in the name of the texture uh, or whatever you want to look for. Another thing you can do is go through some of the filters here. Uh, if it's a door, it'll come up with some door textures, although those don't look like doors to me. Uh, flooring. Uh, there's also like a whole bunch here. You switch it back to all, it'll show all the textures. Uh, some more map specific ones. This is pretty useful. Surface type. You know how I typed in wood? There's actually a wood one here. So the materials are going to be set to actual materials. So maybe it doesn't say wood in the material name, but it is a wood texture. It'll come up in here because now I said wood. So it's got all the different material surface types there. Uh, we got material types here as well. Not really going to be as useful as the surface types one, but if you were looking for something that was emissive, that was emitting light, I could probably go with an emissive decal, although there only seems to be one. So this would actually be producing light in game. Okay, so that kind of covers the three basic windows that you usually have in the start of Radiant. I can also bring up more additional windows by pressing a lot of the key buttons that were set up the same way in uh, World at War, and bring up your entity window. And I can close that by clicking N again. I can click M to bring up the models window. B will bring up the entity browser. S will bring up the surface inspector. So a lot of these I'm going to be going over in later tutorials, but like for now, uh, we have uh, just kind of going through what they do and whatnot. Uh, the terrain, advanced terrain editing. G will bring up the vertex color editing and whatnot. Um, so a lot of the the initial like key bindings is still the same. If you don't have any of those memorized or you don't want it to keep referencing back to this video, uh, what you can do is uh, you can right click at the top here and this will list off all the windows that you can add in. So this is also very useful, say you accidentally got rid of your camera view. I can go up here and right click and then go to camera and I got my camera view back. So that will list all the different windows that you have if you're missing one. So that's pretty useful. You can also drag around the windows. Uh, you can see where they're going to snap to. So if I'm holding the textures one right now. Um, if I wanted it beside the camera view, I can stick it over here. And then now I got three parallel windows. Um, I can stick it back to underneath the camera view by doing to the bottom of the camera window. So now it's at the bottom here. I can also layer them so that multiple windows are over the same thing. So I can take the uh, textures window and stick it right directly over top the camera one and now I got two separate tabs here. But to me, the traditional radiant from World at War was set up like this, with the left being your XY top, your camera, and your textures. So this is the way I like having mine set up. You can always customize it the way you like and whatnot. I usually try to keep everything kind of relatively the same and when I bring up like an extra window I'll keep it over here and I typically try to layer them and that's why when I bring them up they're all layered over here and I can kind of just keep them off to the side and close them if I need to. Okay, so that covers the UI of, or at least the basic UI of Radiant. So the next thing that we're going to be going on to is just the um, the lighting. Okay, so uh, very first thing is we're going to want to get some extra tools up here on the camera. So we're going to go to view. We're going to hit uh, view toolbar and click on exposure. This is going to bring up a little lightning bolt tool here, which is going to help us compile the lights. Right now, it's grayed out, so what we can do is I am currently in what's called full bright uh, mode. So right now, there's no lighting. Bright kind of looks like dull and whatnot. To switch over to lighting mode, and keep in mind this might bog down your computer if your computer doesn't have good enough specs, you want to click uh, 
So F7 is going to be full bright mode, which is the, the mode we're currently in. F8 will go into lighting mode and F9 will go into game view mode. Although you can go in game view mode while being in full bright mode, but it's recommended that you switch over to the actual lighting mode. So I'm going to get out of game mode, but just stay in lighting mode. And then what we're going to do is you'll notice the shadows are kind of messed up here. So we're going to do the bake. So that's the lightning bolt. Now that we're in lighting mode is now yellow. So we'll click on that. You'll notice it's processing everything right now. When it's done, it'll show green. So if your map is a lot larger, uh, it's going to have more lights to bounce and the shadows to build and bake. So there's, it's going to take longer, but since this is a quick test map, it goes by pretty fast. Uh, so now you can see the textures or the lighting's a lot better. The shadows are better although this being low quality baking you can still see the shadows are still a little messed up but it's okay so that kind of covers the lighting for now uh, we'll go into a more advanced lighting system later but for now that's how you can set it up once you've done the one bake it'll save it into your map and you can switch between it and you'll have good lighting anytime you do a lot of new changes uh, to lighting and whatnot you're going to want to do a new bake okay so the third thing that we're going to cover, like we mentioned, is going to be adding entities. So we're going to start off by basic brushes. So this is going to be like, say I wanted to make a building. Uh, you're going to have uh, grids at the top and you can select them from up here, but you'll notice they're also bound to key numbers by default. You can uh, basically click one through whatever number and then that will set up your whatever grid size you're on. So if I start clicking different numbers, you'll see the grids changing. I like sticking with four for walls. That's kind of like, actually, yeah, four, four or three for grid size. Kind of up to you, but I'm gonna stick for four for now. Smaller details and whatnot, we'll use smaller grid sizes. So we'll make sure, I'm gonna select the ground here. I can see that it's lined up here. I'm gonna select back to my wall. Remember, escape to deselect stuff. So I have my wall selected. I'm gonna drag it back down. Standard wall size is typically about 128. So I'm gonna bring it to a different grid size, bring it 128. I'm gonna copy and paste. I'm going to drag my wall off. I'd like to have it even eight by eight, and then we'll continue on, drag it down here. We have another wall. So there we go. We got two walls going on here. Um, I could make a, a ceiling if I wanted to. We'll just kind of drag this over here. And then make this about the same thickness. We'll drag it up. Voila, we got a ceiling, we got a little room. So we can throw in some textures. So we'll go wall, just something really quick. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. This is just a tutorial. You pick out your nice textures later. So we, there we go. We got a wall, we got a ceiling. You can come in here, whatever. <laughs> okay, so we'll go into more advanced uh, stuff like this later. This is just kind of showing you how to add this stuff in. Um, so now that is brushes. We'll go into actually cutting them and whatnot in a different tutorial, a bit more advanced. For now, we'll start in uh, adding our models in. So we can rather click M to bring up models, or like I said before, you can bring it from here and go to models. It'll bring up the window. So this is uh, just like textures. It's set up to show all or all in use. So this are all the ones that are being used by the map. I'm going to go to all. Let's do a chair. So I can just drag in a chair. Let's go with uh, this one here. So you can see I have the model here. It snaps to wherever you drag it onto. Uh, I can then select the model. I can click N to bring up the entity window. And you can see, I like before, in World of War rating, we have a model scale. So we can change this to about two. It'll change the size of it, or I could change it down to 0.5. It'll make it smaller and whatnot. Um, so that is adding models, model scales, and whatnot. Uh, we can then do prefabs as well, so I'll get rid of those windows. Right click at the top here and I can bring down the prefab browser. So in the prefab browser, it's going to be basically looking up map files in your underscore prefab folder. So there's going to be a bunch of ones that are already preset. So uh, for instance, this KRM wall by, if I go into game mode, you can actually see it's the KRM on the wall. It's a prefab, it's a map file containing literally just this. Just a little brush there, the chalk texture, and a strut. So say I wanted to add another wall weapon in, I'm gonna go down to ZM, I'm gonna go to ZM core, and we'll see spawnable weapons. So there's a lot of stuff here, so I could pick pistol burst, which is gonna be the RK5. I believe that is backwards, so I'll click R to go into rotate mode. I'm gonna select four for the grid, and I'm gonna just turn that around so it's completely turned. 
uh, 180 degrees. I'll stick it over under the wall. If you notice, I'm going a bit quick here, but like I have a lot to cover in this tutorial because it's there's a lot to radiant. Uh, but this is all very basic stuff. I'll go a bit more in depth when we go into more advanced stuff. So as you can see here, I have the RK5 on the wall. It treats like a model. I don't believe you can model scale. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure you can't model scale uh, prefabs. Uh, so we just have the prefab here on the wall. Now when you compile in game, you'll be able to buy the RK5 off the wall. So that kind of covers prefabs. You can look through these, you can see there's more there. Um, you can make your own prefabs, we'll, we'll go into that later. Um, but for now, that's how to add models, that's how to add brushes, and that's how to add prefabs. All right, so the very last thing I'm going to uh, cover is going to be a quick little tip. So if you guys have been uh, familiar with the World at War Radiant or even COD, uh, COD 4 Radiant, you'll notice that you can't right click and go misc prefab or misc model or whatnot. Like these don't exist for you. Um, this was something that was kind of neat that I liked having. If you uh, press B to bring up the entity browser, uh, you'll notice that there's all these things like misc model and whatnot. Uh, if I wanted to have this onto my right click, so it's a bit easier and quicker for you guys, uh, you see how I have MISC here? If I came up to MISC and I did toggle favorite, it'll actually add it in there. Since I already had it in there, it's going to get rid of it. So if I do it one more time, I'll see MISC is in here. So I can do MISC model, MISC prefab, prop, and volume decal, just like it is in here. Um, if you wanted to do something more specific, like I have a light actually here, that wasn't something that World at War had, but I just threw it in there because it makes it quicker. If you go to unsorted, you'll notice there's a light here. Usually you just drag it on and use the light. But what I do is I right click toggle favorite. I've already done that. It's in my right click favorite section. So I can right click and add a light over here now. So that's just a quick way, quick little tip on how to Kind of customize it and make it seem a bit closer to World of War Radiant. Alright, thanks for watching guys. That covers everything in this tutorial. We're going to be going to more in-depth uh, tutorials later on such as prefabs and terrain editing and more advanced lighting and a lot more stuff to come. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.